Go ahead, tell us your name and uh, what you'd like to share. Hi, I'm Grace, I'm 18, I'm from the best city in the world, Glasgow. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'm here with Magic Breakfast this weekend and our focus is um, providing free school breakfast for children who would otherwise be too hungry to learn. I want to be a politician in the future and whenever I'd imagined like the fairer world, I'd always imagined the food system working in the way that Magic Breakfast does, like a lot of charities doing free government provision of food. I think hearing from everyone this weekend, it's made me understand that we need like a food revolution. The food system is broken and I knew that already, but we need complete and utter overhaul. I never ever would have considered like soil health or farming as an aspect of like what we needed to change. But I understand now how it all links together. And I think I also now have hope that we can actually revolutionize the food system. Like all of us coming together this weekend, from completely different um, backgrounds and different aspects of the food system that we care about, it's all going to link together. We all have to band together in the future because I do actually think now that a food revolution is possible. Yeah! Woo-hoo! Oh my God, that makes me want to do a little dance. So exciting to hear that. Fantastic. Hello. Um, so the most inspiring thing for me has probably got to be um, the farming. So when we got spoke to about how farming is such a big part of it, it so, plays such a big role, and that um, supermarkets are buying internationally when we've got such amazing super, um, farmers here who put in the time, work, and effort to provide the stuff that supermarkets need, fresh fruit and veg, but we're buying internationally. And I think that is probably one of the main causes as to why we're lacking in um, food security here as well, because if we can get it so close to home, why on earth are you adding to the deprivation, sorry, the deprivation of the surrounding economies, so taking from an international place when you can get it from so local and help your community and the UK. Fantastic, Thank absolutely you. well said. Um, hi, I'm Holly, I'm from Youth Lane, uh, and I think kind of just echoing what everyone said, but I don't know, on a different perspective. Um, I think just having so many different groups, so you have to either like bite back and like flame, like not very similar in terms of their aims, but in the end it's the same food system. And I think it's been really interesting just like hearing from different people's perspectives and how they got into um, food activism. And I think for me, one of the really interesting thing was with the um, Act for Change uh, session, hearing from, um, I can't remember his name, the guy from Lebanon, um, because it's just, you forget that all the things like war and politics and everything, it's all so intersectional. Uh, And I think just like getting together with so many different people um, with different interests and different kind of skill sets really demonstrates how there is definitely hope for the future and that we can all kind of develop our activism differently to think about how we can help each other as well as what we believe in. And I think it's just a really nice, it's been a really lovely two days. Yeah. (laughs) Amazing. Tell us your name and where you're from. Oh, I'm Holly. I'm from Dorset. (laughs) Great. Thank you so much, Holly. Fantastic. Now we had a few hands up over here, Joe. Would you like to head over to this side of the room? Hi, I'm Felix. I'm 16 from Kings Lynn. Uh, I'm just really grateful to be able to come here and have this opportunity. I never would have been able to go to a festival like this otherwise. Uh, I've only recently got involved with the Right to Food and the Food Foundation, so I can't wait now to see what we're going to do in the future and see what we can achieve. And I can't wait to go back to my region and start tackling the massive food poverty and lots of uh, other issues around vulnerability that we have there. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Felix. (laughs) Fantastic, fantastic. Right, we're going to go to Izzy here. Yeah, I'm Izzy and I came here this weekend honestly not expecting to see so many young people like me who are also passionate about food. I didn't realise that there were so many people like us who were interested in this. And I came knowing that I wanted to campaign for food and to change a broken food system. I didn't know exactly what area I wanted to protest in. But now I've realised that I'm most passionate in food poverty and food equality. And... This weekend has honestly really inspired me to go out and make some change. 
And the best bit for me has been hearing from other people. Like in the last session, I spoke to fantastic people from Flame and other groups about what they're doing. And it's also inspiring, even though it's not necessarily what I'm most passionate about. Amazing. Thank you, Izzy. Thank you so much. We've got some hands up over here from some great. Lanray? Hello. Uh, I'm Lanray. I'm from Leeds. Um, and I'm with Bite Back. What I've loved about this weekend is I've, I've met so many young people from different organisations, so playing, writing to food, a magic breakfast, and what I've learned is that we're all passionate about change, and together we can change the world, and well, even if it's just our community. I've learned so much from young activists, uh, from Amy, from Maya, all of these speakers around the world, and I think it's just great what we can do when we come together. So, literally my message to everyone is, go home, go home today, tomorrow, and just continue what you're doing because in the next 10 years, 20 years, we are going to be the ones in power and we are going to be the ones to change the system because this is Youth for Food. Well said, Lanry, this is Youth for Food. I don't know about you guys, but I'm tingling all over at the moment. We're going to come we'll over here. Around all of you, okay? Hello. Hello, uh, my name's Ellie, I'm from the Scout Association, uh, so I feel that the information this weekend on a larger scale will help with the ongoing work to climate change the Scouts are doing. Um, however, as a Scout leader for a group in quite a deprived area, um, I feel that a lot of this information is going to help me ensure that none of my Scouts turn up to meetings hungry because I want to make sure they come fed. Hi, I'm Meg. I am just a chaperone to Saffron, and she, she was very inspiring this weekend with her poem. Woo! Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be the embarrassing big sister. Um, but I just wanted to say, even though I wasn't meant to be here, it's been a really lovely weekend, and I've been really inspired to not only see young people, but young females being the real like face for change. And, like, because even though um, I'm only here and Safi is only here because it started with our mum, um, showing that we grew up with like a 15p loaf of bread in the cupboard and that was it for the week. Um, so it's been really nice to see so many people fighting for children not to grow up the same way we did and be hungry most of the time. So it's lovely to see Safi do what she does and have her activism. But I love feminism, so it's been really lovely to see female leaders in charge of a big organisation. Amy with the plastic is absolutely inspirational, and oh, you're all just inspos, honestly, and I love you all. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Lurk. Um, I'm also from the Stouts, um, but I am from Belfast in Northern Ireland, as you can hear. Um, I came to this event not really sure what this was about. I knew it was about tackling the issues in the food system and was aware of a number of those and was passionate. But this has enabled me to look at it from a broader perspective. It has enabled me to learn more about lots of different areas and issues that we can all work upon. And as someone from um, the far end of the UK, we're not always included in national campaigns. Uh, we're often an afterthought when it comes to politics. But to here to have a group from Northern Ireland, to have a number of us, to have people raising different issues to decision makers and to campaigners, it's really been great to have our voices heard. So thank you to everyone for helping us this weekend. Amazing. Hi guys, uh, my name is Matt, uh, I'm from Brighton, um, and I didn't really, like many of you, I didn't really know what to expect when I came to this weekend, um, but it has been amazing just meeting all of you, like learning what you've been up to and like what work you're doing. Um, so for me, I, my like background is in sustainable investing, um, and you all taught me something this weekend, which is that about 10 years ago, the idea of sustainable investing in, you know, um, environmentally friendly stocks, equities, whatever, um, wasn't really heard of, and it was young people that made the change that then influenced adults to be like, actually, we need to put our money into things that are going to benefit our children. 
And you guys have made me realize that if that happened 10 years ago with climate change, that could happen in the next few years with food poverty. And it's, it's, your, it's gonna be your work that's gonna lead that change. So just thank you guys so much. It's been really inspiring to meet you all. Thank you. Thank you so much, James. Great. I think we've got a young, young chap. Hi. Right. Um, hi everyone. Um, I'm Faith Jones. I'm 15 from North Wales. Um, I came here this weekend, and mostly for now, I've been I've done campaigning about a uh, healthy, more affordable, um, more affordable meals, uh, mostly within schools, and about prices of healthy food over junk food, and making sure people have more sustainable meals within schools. Um, I, I didn't think there'd be so many other young people actually uh, interested in this. I knew there was like, quite a few people, but it's been like, really, it's been amazing meeting people from like Magic Breakfast, Bite Back, who, who, who've had conversations, like, who have some of the same interests as me, but then also hearing about all the farming and plastics and how they all link together. And it would be really nice if in the future we can meet up again, keep in contact with everyone. Because if we all team up like, together, we all work together, even though we have slightly different aims, like, it, it is all like, interlocked. If we like, all campaign together, we can make a huge difference, not only in the UK, but then throughout the entire world as well. Because we do really need to change the food system and have like, more cultural food. People making food on their own and more healthy food uh, cooked from home instead of like ordering takeaways all the time so it's been amazing really inspiring just listening to everyone and meeting everyone from all across the uk thank you so much Faith. you know i just want to i just want to say quickly as i was lying in bed falling asleep last night i was thinking we need to find a way to keep us all in touch so i'm gonna we're gonna talk about that maybe we'll find we'll put a facebook group or whatever it is that you guys want to do uh, so we can all keep in touch and keep that connection and learning going hi i'm alex i'm 16 i'm from bite back and the only thing I really knew about this festival was that it was in Bristol and I was going along with my colleagues. But coming along today, I've learned so many different things about food security, sustainability, water sanitation. And it's just been great to learn about loads of different issues that I didn't even think were that important. So it's really been a, an eye opener for me and I hope in the future we can do more things like this as well. Um, hi, my name's Anna and I'm from Brighton. Um, I just want to say how inspiring this weekend has been for me. I just think not only what you guys do and everyone does here, that's it's just amazing, but it's also how you guys use your voice. When we had the seminar yesterday on spoken word, music, art, everything is just so intertwined and so interlinked and it's the way and um, everyone expresses themselves and in spite of all our ages, even though we're so young, I mean, someone I think started being an activist when they were about 11 and now has written a book. Like, that is just insane. Um, so, yeah, everyone should just give themselves a massive pack on the back because everyone is so articulate here, and that's how we're going to deliver change. Yes, thank you. Have we got anyone else in the room? Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Hello, I'm Sophie. I'm from Newcastle. Um, I just want to say cheers for a really good weekend, and I just want to highlight the fact that we've spent the weekend filling our faces. Thanks to the Food Foundation. Thank you. Um, and I, but I just want to draw the fact that we're going to go home back to communities where pe kids don't have the option to fill their faces or have these events like this. And I just want to make, just wanted to highlight that and say that we need to make sure that no child is too hungry to learn. Yeah. <laughs> Coming over here to this uh, young man on the left. Hi, my name's Tao. I'm from Glasgow. Um, it's been amazing to see the amount of young activists all been here. And it's been obviously this festival and everything. It's been amazing of the turnout as well. And it's been good to see like, everybody all getting involved with everything, like the in March yesterday. Yeah, it's been and everything else and all that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. 
Hi everyone. Um, I think one of the most beautiful things that have come out is just this here now, um, passing the mic. That is something that I want you all to carry. Um, this is an intersectional issue. We've learned over the weekend that there are many layers to this and people in their own little niches fighting um, very passionately for um, different uh, ju injustices, right? And so pass the mic. If someone asks you a question and you don't know, you found someone this weekend that knows the answer to it or that is campaigning on it. So I think working together and ensuring that um, we are being intersectional in our approach is very important. Well said, Christina. Thank you. Do we have any hands up? Anyone else would like to share? Maybe someone would like to say that there's a particular action or particular campaign that you're working on that you want to share with the group while you have the opportunity. Um, hi, I'm Jess, I'm from Brighton. Uh, so I was gonna go off of a particular act for change. So I'm really interested in the environment um, and I've been around food my whole life. I work as a chef. Um, and food for me is really important and I never quite understood how important it was but I think it's incredible how it links all of us together because fundamentally we have to eat to survive um, and it links all, every person on this planet and I think it's such a powerful thing um, and it's incredible and it's so influential to everything that happens and I think it's amazing that we're all here campaigning and talking and it's so cool that everyone's chatting and I was worried at the beginning that it was going to be um, I don't know, people weren't gonna sort of be on the same wavelength, but everyone's got different issues and we're all just on the same page and I love that. Um, so awesome. I'm so happy to have come this weekend. So well done, everyone. Thanks. Thank you so much. We're so happy that you all come as well. Would anyone else like to take the opportunity to share? Hi, I'm Mary and I'm not a young person. Um, I'm not really sharing anything particularly, but I really, really wanted to ask a question. So you're all amazingly motivated and committed and incredibly well informed and really passionate about changes in the food system. How do we engage other young people, all the other young people who are not quite where you are? How do we get them on board and make them feel a bit more like you do? What's the secret? Who wants to answer that? Here we are, long lady at the back. Hi, I'm Tasha um, from Bite Bag. I think my answer to that is literally just having normal conversations with your friends and peers about it. For example, all the things that I know about the food systems, I certainly didn't learn it at school. Nobody sat me down in a subject, told me about all the injustices that's happening in the food system but rather I was having conversations with people and then letting me know about all of these different tactics that go on in the system and I got angry about it and it's through that anger that's kind of fueled my activism. So for me, it's not like a you know, one-on-one -on -one instruction manual on how do you become passionate about it. It's you acquire the knowledge and if it interests you, you get angry about it and you want to change and if it doesn't, that's okay. You can continue to have conversations until you find that's something that really just gets you all riled up about it and hopefully that continues to fuel your activism going forward. Very well said. Anybody else? Hi, I'm, oh, I'm Sam. I'm from the Scouts. And um, I always think, when I think of activism, I think lived experience is the most important thing. And I think that's one of the great things about us all here today is we've all got lived experience in different aspects and different exp expertise in different areas. And that's why uh, we were all able to come together and campaign on different issues and that intersectional coming together is what will bring around the big change. But what I also think is really important is that we need to teach everyone that their voices are important. So I was talking to someone earlier about like school councils and speaking on school councils and those opportunities are only really available to like one or two children per class and I think we need to educate young people from like every single young person has a story and something to say and they need to be taught that that's really important and given the confidence from a really early age to just roll with that and make their voice heard. Amazing. Fantastic. So I would like to... Oh. 
Um, sorry, just in addition to Tasha's point, I think we need to stop, I mean, we don't, but um, we need to get other people to stop looking at food as a separate issue. It's something that bleeds into every other aspect of our lives. And so if we talk about food as, you know, with the cultural significance that it has, for example, in the black community, chicken shop culture is a massive thing that uh, we talk about at Bite Back. And instead of attacking that, embracing that and saying, well, actually the chicken shop is the only safe and dry place that young people have and that they need an alternative in which they can have healthier options, nutritious food, at a place where they're out of the streets and you know. Um, so I think it's about connecting to young people just as young people and food comes with that. I think food is a beautiful part of you know, being young and growing and um, we need to talk about it like that instead of just an eat well plate. <laughs> well said. Okay, I'll come over to Ryan. Hi folks, um, Ryan again from uh, Glasgow. What I would say is, um, from a Scottish point of view, th th there's been talk in Scotland for a very long time around how we normalise a lot of things, but actually sometimes it's about getting rid of the word normalise, and it's about living our lives. I think that one thing I'm passionate on is people being an individual in a wider group, which is society, and knowing that we're all human beings. I, I often think of a, a reform of PSC where you know, we, we, we're often told that we don't know how, how to you know, manage our own finances or we're told that you, know, you should be kept in your box and you know, told whatever you need to be told in life to get, to get yourself on that. So often people that are in the generations above us, like my mums and dads or my grandparents who will tell us that you, know, you just need to live your life and get through it until you're an adult, then you can make your own decisions. I, I suppose I was always making my own decisions you know, as from the age of 11, 12, and I think that one thing that we need to get across to other young folk, and back to your point, is that I think we need to normalise saying to them that activism isn't a bad thing, you know, and I think it's something that we can, you know, y I, I won't even ever probably grasp the whole idea of what activism is. I think I'll just probably open my mouth and I'll start speaking at any point given, um, which is probably a bad trait on my part, to be fair. Um, but I think it's about that idea of just knowing that you can have a chat with folk, and that is activism. And I think you also need to you know, know that as an activist yourself already, you need to know that you can have a good set of years and know that time is endless. And sometimes you need to have you know, the, the minutes, the hours in a day that you never thought you ever had to sit down with a group of people and say, this is life. You know, this is, you know, if you think that you see something that's wrong, put that hand up as far as possible you know, to the sky and say, I want to talk about it. And also, blue sky think, you know, don't think that you can never do something. Always put your hand up as far as possible. You know, I always remember, I, I spoke earlier about Hooker Scotland and the, the CEO at the time saying, you know, you should always reach for the stars. I believe you should actually reach for the planets that we don't know exist yet. Because you, if you reach for something that you don't know actually where you're going yet, you will get somewhere because it's about how you navigate that path. And I think, you know, it's all about saying the people that are potentially going to be the next activists or the activists that are our age is saying, you know, go out there and reach for something that you might not know is possible yet because everybody has the potential and we will get it right for every child. Thanks. Beautifully said. Thank you so much, Ryan. I think Faith just wanted to add one last thing. Um, someone said before about how we certainly didn't get taught about this in school. So what I think is that we should try and get it taught about in school. If you can't go through the entire school and not know anything about the way our food system works, we can't make change and get young people to actually uh, campaign about all this if they know nothing, nothing about it. So I know in Wales we have uh, PSHE as a lesson, I'm not sure if it's anywhere else, but a uh, lesson where they just talk about things throughout the community and they, they there's never once been something where they talk about um, activism and where they say that it's not a bad thing and they don't talk about food poverty. It's one of those subjects that people tend to stay away from. So I think that we should try and, like, within like, schools or colleges, universities, um, try and get, try and talk to a teacher, see if, like, even if it's something like a club, um, or see if they can do like a one-off lesson of assembly where 
you can actually tell everyone about what you're campaigning for and what food poverty actually is about like plastics or farming and what we need to do to actually bring about change and where they can go to get involved in it if they're interested.